what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel today we have something a little bit different today and something we haven't done in a little while we have another dms guild review now val serene i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly over at the dms guild sent me a copy of one of their latest creations legendary hunts coastal encounters and can i say for a spoiler for the rest of this video this is some of the largest and in my opinion one of my most favorite homebrew that i have been sent to date so we're going to talk about it right now now if you're wondering why it took so long for me to get this next dm's guild review done well other than me having a drive to get the monster manual chapter of dead by daylight done this homebrew supplement clocks in at just under 200 pages so are those 200 pages of material worth the price of admission uh, spoiler alert yes they are but the video is not done yet so because this supplement is 200 pages i'm not going to be able to scroll through every single page like i did with the last living fireball supplement so instead we're going to do a cliff notes overview of what you can exactly find in this book how much exists in each chapter etc and you can make the decision for yourself so let's begin by going over what exactly legendary hunts coastal encounters is Legendary hunts are short monster hunting adventures a dungeon master can use to populate their Dungeons and Dragons campaigns. Each hunt focuses on a particular creature of legend from the mighty and colossal deep dweller to the strange and twisted baffle beholder. Many of these creatures may exist at the same time and overcoming one can grant rare and powerful items. The fang teeth of the deep dweller can be harvested and transformed into fearsome weapons while segments of the baffle beholder's shell can be turned into armor with unique magical properties. So there is a unique harvesting system introduced in legendary hunts, which I am a fan of personally. Each legendary hunt has a number of stages characters must go through before encountering the creature itself. Some legendary creatures require the characters to sail to a particular location or speak to a mysterious shanty in order to summon it. Others might only appear on certain days or must be lured out with an item or body part from a particular creature. Once summoned, a legendary creature fights with monstrous ferocity and intelligence that can challenge even the bravest of characters. So the, the basis behind each of these encounters is they should take up an entire session possibly more if your players take a bit longer than you than you might think they would each hunt in this book is divided into its own chapter presenting a full color image of the creature lore tall tales and particular habits it has each chapter ends with a short quest involving the monster various plot hooks to put into your game so the characters can want to go do this themselves a harvesting table and items a player can craft from the harvested parts there is a lot to go through and it might not make a lot of sense right now so at the end of this brief introduction I will be going over a single encounter in this book as to not spoil the entire thing so you can make a decision for yourself this book also does imply that you have the monster manual PHB DMG and ghosts of salt marsh as some of the creatures in here will refer to the above supplements so just be aware that if mo you the only one you probably wouldn't already own here would be ghosts of salt marsh possibly so let's briefly discuss the harvesting creature mechanic in this book for example, right here, we have a body part that you would find off of one of the slain monsters and you could find flesh 2d4 pieces. And if you want to harvest this flesh, you'd have to make a DC 13 wisdom survival check and you can store eight pieces per crate that you would have here. And you'd be able to craft a monster fillets, two pieces of flesh would be required, which you would, which is the minimum amount you could get. So you can minimum make one of these monster fillets will require cooking utensils and a one hour, one hour's worth of time, plus a DC 14 wisdom survival check to craft said monster fillets. And each of these things is going to be different per monster, of course. And the table guide over here would have your body part, your harvest DC, items to be able to craft, uh, the crafting requirement and the crafting DC. Something neat that I didn't expect to be in here was encounter icons, which give you the ability to see before running each creature exactly how each creature would behave so you can run them in the most realistic way possible, such as the tank. A creature with this icon has a lot of hit points or high AC is able to take a beating but not necessarily inflict much in return these creatures are usually intended to be used as frontline fighters against melee heavy enemies or act as protectors for spellcasters so you each time you see these icons you will have a baseline for how you can run these monsters which is a really cool addition in my opinion they also have similar tokens right below here talking about creature rarity so an example stat block shown here is the driftwood mimic and as you can see here it has two of the icons listed below showing you how a, or giving you a baseline of how you could run this creature it is blue meaning it is uncommon might have some unique abilities which it does listed here it also has the ambusher and the lone wolf tag here which are listed above to show exactly how you would run each of these tokens right here so every stat block in the supplement is equally as detailed and also equally as different 
So now that we've gone over the basics of the book and how everything is written out, let's go over exactly what it looks like in the first chapter, The Deep Dweller. Now, just like most legendary creatures in Dungeons and Dragons, it does have its own lore and its own motivations, as you can see listed here. For the Deep Dweller specifically, there is there's two different stat blocks for adults and juveniles that you can we can look through later. And like most other creatures in D&D, the Deep Dweller has its own lair and subsequently its own lair actions. All of these themes seen in this specific chapter are going to be seen in all of the ones later down in this supplement. There are also details here on how the existence of the creature alone will create regional effects. We did see this in some of the other books, such as Mythic Odysseys of Theros. We also have a size comparison chart here. We'll show you exactly how big this creature is. I'm going to shrink myself down a little bit here. This thing is massive compared to just a normal ship, and as it would probably have pretty significant effects. And to summon this creature, a magical sea shanty must be spoken or sung aloud by a character with spell casting, ritual casting, or packed magic features. If the shanty is spoken successfully, all sources of light, magical or otherwise, are magically doused. If all lights remain doused in this manner for 10 minutes, the summoning is complete, and the Deep Dweller awakens, appears within one mile of the creature that summoned and is hostile to all creatures. So you can make this a very flavorful encounter. This is the full size comparison. Here is the, she <laughs> the sea shanty itself. As you can see, there is a lot of thought that went into every single one of these encounters. So now that we've gone over the basics of Legendary Hunt's Coastal Encounters, let's talk about exact specifics. First off, this book will price you at, at a baseline of 20 US dollars for a watermarked PDF version, going all the way up to $50 for a watermarked PDF plus a hardcover premium coloring book. But for the sake of this review, we'll talk about if this is worth buying at just the $20 version for the PDF. For starters, the book has eight chapters of Legendary Hunts, each having two different stat blocks involved with each chapter. There are dozens and dozens of magic items and different harvestable parts to craft for each, all unique in their own way. Each chapter also comes with its own maps, its own plot hooks. Each chapter also has its own table of how valuable every single individual part or item is off of the monster that gets harvested. So aside from the legendary hunts, there's also a bestiary featuring 29, I believe, unique monsters that have been added specifically for this supplement, all of which come with very detailed guides for GMs looking to run these very complicated at first encounters to make things easier for you. So in short and in summary, is legendary hunts coastal encounters worth the $20 price of admission? Absolutely. If I had to pick my favorite thing about Legendary Hunts Coastal Encounters, it would have to be the attention to detail in the design of every single stat block, in the plot hooks, in the carving and harvesting system that I've seen in other homebrew, but this one makes it even more unique than those. Every single piece of this homebrew spared zero expense, and I could not recommend this enough. So that is my review attempt of Legendary Hunts Coastal Encounters over on DM's Guild. I do apologize for how scattered this review might have been. I have never had to review a supplement this large before, so trying to figure out a way to do this in a short manner while also not giving anything or giving everything away was a bit of a tough challenge. I will leave a link to Legendary Hunts Coastal Encounters over on DM Scale down in the description below where you can go take a look and see and if you want to buy it for yourself you can find it over there. As always if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to leave it a like and subscribe if you haven't. The next review we do on this channel will probably be Tasha's Cauldron of Everything the brand new D&D book coming out on the 15th of October in a little over two weeks so be sure to look forward to that one coming soon, guys. And until next time, have fun, stay safe, and as always, happy gaming.